of sometimes how, how cynical we can get. Because when I say God is good and God is faithful, I mean it. <laughs> and sometimes it's easy to be like, yeah, God is good. And then you kind of just go out of your way and then stop and going, no, you know, God is good. And God is faithful. That's who he is. And you can go on and on and on on who God is. Because he says he's the great I am. So you know what that means? That means he's everything. <laughs> and all things good, too. He's merciful, he's just, he's forgiving, he's kind. It's amazing. And I love presenting these truths to my kids, too. You know what I mean? I have three kids now. It is crazy. My daughter's going to be 10 years old in September. Oh my. Another daughter will be eight, Bella, Ariane, and then my son will be three in like three weeks. It's amazing. We're doing P90X together, it's really fun. You know what I love about them? And, and, and I should have been sharing this story because I love their different personalities. Because I want to, like, God, I want them to be sold out for you. I want them to, you know, have my ideals of, of what I want them to do, you know. Really, I've, I've come to the conclusion, because my dad always told me this. He said, Jeremy, I, first of all, I want you to know that I don't care what you do in life, as long as you're serving Jesus and doing it. And you guys, that was such a burden lifter off of me. And so with my kids, I'm like, I tell them, hey, girls, whatever you want to do, just make sure you're loving Jesus, serving him with what you're doing. And so it's went from, you know, marine biologist to a zookeeper, which I'm like, cool, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. So my oldest daughter now, she's like, I want to be a missionary. I'm like, sweet, go for it, you know, I love that. But it's funny because they, they have different personalities. My oldest daughter is the like, whatever you want, I'll do it. You know, the kind of pleasing mentality. And first, that, the, that mindset of me was, you know, like, no, you know, you can't have that mindset because the Bible says, you're not supposed to please man, you know. And, and I'm like, the Lord, I put out to be that way. And, and God's like, well, wait a second, I've instilled that in her for a reason. Pray that what that bent is in her heart, pray for good. So I'm like, oh, yeah. God, I pray that she wants to please you with all of her heart. That that's her desire, you know what I mean? So this whole different twist in my thought came out. And my other daughter, who's eight years old, she's... She's kind of the follower, and she just kind of does what anybody else does, and she's very, you know, we go outside, and we actually were riding the floor the other day, and just kind of cruising along, and, and she's like, Daddy, can we pick up those flowers? <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I run over one. She's like, Daddy, you ran over a flower, and, you know, just that whole different personality. And so I'm like, no, I don't want her to be a follower. I want her to be a leader. And he's like, no, pray that she follows me wholeheartedly. She follows hard after me, you know? And that's like a whole different shift in my thinking. I'm like, okay, take that following man and say that she's going to follow you, Jesus, with everything. Now, my son, he's crazy. <laughs> so pray for me. Next song. But he has that, like, I'm going to be a warrior, and he just has that mentality. Like, I'm going to get what I want to get. And he grabbed my wife's face the other day by the cheeks, and he's like, cook pizza. <laughs> Literally, that's what he did. <laughs> Son, relax. He just needs pizza. But I'm like, all right. I want him to have that mentality to go out and just, what does he want to do? He wants to get what he wants. and But that he would be under the submission and the authority of Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, not his own devices, you know what I mean? And as I look at my kids and I'm looking at this generation, I'm like, God, please, it's difficult. It's a very self-seeking generation. It's difficult to take that type of thrust that our whole society has thrown us towards and turn it towards the complete opposite and what Jesus has said, hey, deny yourself. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. That kind of blows our minds nowadays because live while you're young. Do what you want to do that makes you happy.
for some people, some people's happiness is sick, to be honest. So if we all did what made us happy, it'd be a very crazy world. It already kind of is. I'm not being Mr. Doom and Gloom tonight. Because, yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening. But I go, but God, you're so much greater than all that. So I don't sit and I'm not moping around going, what's wrong? What's wrong with our society? And oh my goodness, this is crazy. And I'm going, God, you can do great things. We can see things happen in our generation that will raise up some amazing people and raise up people to do amazing things. I'm excited about that. So maybe this will kind of wake us up. But we hear, I was speaking about surrender earlier, and we hear this whole phrase of surrender, I surrender all, and I was saying earlier that God's like, great, you know, then I want that. And we always say, but I'm cool with 99% of everything, but that one thing I want, that isn't surrender. But can we imagine if we really were surrendered completely the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, what would happen? You guys, listen. I'm led and I'm driven out of Jesus' love. I'm not driven because I'm trying to please him because he's not happy with us. He's coming down on me for all the wrong things I've done. Because I know he loves me so much, like Paul, how could he go and be so kind of reckless, I guess you could say? Or he went many places and he was shipwrecked, he was beaten, he was in prison, he was left for dead. How could this guy do this? He was motivated by love, I guarantee you, because he used to persecute those believers. He approved many times, yes, you can kill them and stand back and watch while Stephen was being stoned. I'm sure you went, God, you saved me? You love me? I guarantee you he was motivated out of that. That relationship. That's why I'm motivated. Because he's done so much for me. He's laid down his life for me. And out of the most difficult time in my life, from death, watching my wife suffer through cancer and go be with the Lord, and I know in this area, my heart just is out. But from death, as Jesus shows us, became an overflowing of life. And life into the world when his blood was shed. I serve him out of that. You live in a fallen world, you guys. It wasn't God's intention. It was not God's intention from the beginning. He had such greater things, a greater desire, greater purpose, but he gives us a choice because he loves us, doesn't want to force us to love him back. But he will pursue you he will pursue you and pursue you because he loves you. So even tonight, if you're battling to say, I don't know what this God, hey, he's going to relentlessly pursue you because he loves you. Like he's mad at you and trying to destroy anything. But I want you to know that out of that death came such beautiful life. And I've seen that in my life. Though it's not easy. It's painful, it hurts, there's questions. All I can do is run to the word of God, which is living and active. And this is what brought me life. Because it's God speaking to us. It's as sharp as any double-edged sword, piercing the bone and the marrow. You guys, this is relevant for today. Regardless of what we're hearing, God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's life in these words, not because it's anything written down on this paper, but God ordained, speaking through man, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go out, as I was saying earlier. Share what Christ has done. things going on around our world and it's just 
It's devastating. But I'm not devastated because I have Jesus. And I have hope. So if you have that hope, go share that hope with others around you. Don't hold it in. I want to be reckless for Jesus. Yeah. Not in the world sense. Not just getting crazy for crazy sense. But I want to go. The, what the term in the dictionary actually says, or reckless, it says that, hey, I don't care about the consequences of my action. Which, yeah, that one song says last year, I don't care, I love it, drive your car into a bridge. Yeah. You guys remember that song? You guys realize that song? That's not what I'm talking about. Yep. I'm saying, God, I don't care wherever you call me to go. I don't care about the consequences of my action because I want to serve you because I love you. Because you loved me first and gave yourself for me. That's my motivation. Not because I'm trying to please him. I please him out of my love for him. I'm not trying to earn his favor. He's already given me that. So I respond to that love. I want to be reckless for his endless. I want to be shameless to shout his greatness. I will not be afraid to surrender my way and follow who you are. I want to be reckless. Jesus. Bye.